All right, boys and girls, welcome back. We are taking a look at Module 4, Lessons 6 through 9. We're going to go ahead and jump right into this so that we can get everything we need out of this. Looking at Lesson 6, it says relate fractions as division to fractions of a set. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we know that we are asked to find the value of each of the following. So we have A and B. And if you notice, they're very similar. The only thing that changes from A to B is the numerator goes from 1 to 3. So we have 1 fourth of 16, and then BS steps for 3 fourths of 16. So let's go ahead and figure this out here. So we know that our whole set is 16. That's our 16. We have 1, 2, 3, four parts. Our 16, or our whole, is split into four parts. So our fraction here is asking us for one-fourth of 16. So our one-fourth of 16 is simply going to be that first section right there. So one-fourth of 16 is going to be four. That's our one-fourth. And then three-fourths is going to be three of those squares. So that's going to be one two, three. Let's go ahead and change that to red. Our three fourths is going to be one, two, and three. That's our three fourths, which is equal to one set of four, two set of four, three sets of four, which is going to give us 12. Everybody see that? All right. Now, number two says, out of 18 cookies, two-thirds are chocolate chip. How many of the cookies are chocolate chip? So we know that we have a total of 18 cookies. And it says 2 out of 3. So 2 thirds of the cookies. So we're going to split our whole 18 into 3 parts by making 2 partitions. That's our 3 thirds. We're not looking for 3 thirds though. We are looking for 2 thirds. So I'm going to say 2 out of my 3 are chocolate chip. So there's a couple ways I can do this. You should automatically see the division problem, 18 divided by 3 will give you all 3 thirds, and then you're just going to take 2. But if you want to use the standard algorithm, you can say that 1, 2, 3 units, denominator 3 units equals 18. So then 1 unit is going to be equal to 18 divided by 3. So we know that 18 divided by 3 is 1 unit. It's also equal to 18 thirds. If you don't know what 18 divided by 3 is, you can do it over here. 18 divided by 3, you just keep counting by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. That's going to be 6. So we know that 1 unit is equal to 6. If every unit is equal to 6, then we can say, well, if 1 unit equals 6, then 2 units equals 6 1 time, 2 times, times 2. So 2 units equal 12. So 12 cookies are chocolate chip. All right, moving on to the next problem. Take a look here. Lesson 7 asks us to multiply any whole number by a fraction using a tape diagram. So we have our whole number here and our fraction here. So using a tape diagram, the same way we did in the last lesson, we know that our whole number is going to be our whole. And then we're going to say, well, we have five parts and we're trying to identify three. So we really need to split our whole or our entire tape diagram into five parts. Four lines will give me five parts. Now I'm not trying to identify the whole five parts. I already know that the five parts equals 30, but I'm trying to figure out how much is in three parts. So one, two, three parts give me what? Let's go ahead and find out. So if I know that it should be 30 divided by five, I'm going to skip count by 5 until I get to 30. Say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I know that each part is going to be 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 times 5 is equal to 30. And then I can say, well, these 3 is 3 times 6. And we just said in the last problem, 3 times 6 is 18. So I know that 3 fifths of 30 is equal to 18. If you want to see the standard algorithm, we would say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units equals 30. So then 1 unit equals 30 divided by 5. So 1 unit, 30 fifths, which equals 
6. So then 3 units is just going to be 6 times 3, which is 18. All right, now this problem is a little bit different because it's asking us for 3 fifths of a number. We know that we said of is going to be our multiplication. So we say 3 fifths of a number is equal to 30. So go ahead and push pause on this and see if you can solve this. And I want you to see if you can tell the difference between A and B here. All right, so hopefully you realize that they were saying that we still have our three fifths here. So let's go ahead and identify our fifths. So four lines are going to be five parts. We have our five parts. Our whole has been split into five parts. But if you notice, now we're trying to identify the whole. We know that three fifths of this entire thing. So the entire thing or the whole here, we do not know. We don't know what the whole is. But we know that three fifths of this whole is equal to 30. So if I know that one, two, three equals 30, I could say 30 divided by three. So each one of these, one, two, three, is equal to 10. So that means that if all five parts are equal, these two are also equal to 10. So that means that my number here, or my missing number, is going to be 50. So this is equal to 3 fifths of 50 equals 30. All right, if you need to see that again, all I did was I used the same type of algorithm here. I said that 3 units, 1, 2, 3, those first 3 units equal 30. So 3 units equal 30. Then one unit equals 30 divided by 3. 30 divided by 3 is equal to 10. So that means that 5 units, this is what I was trying to find. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 units is going to be 10 times 5, which equals 50. All right. Hopefully you were able to comprehend that and see the difference between A and B. Mrs. Johnson bake two dozen cookies. Oh, if y'all haven't had Miss Johnson cookies, y'all gotta get some of Miss Johnson cookies. Two thirds of the cookies were oatmeal. Oh, especially her oatmeal cookies, they're amazing. How many oatmeal cookies did Mrs. Johnson bake? Okay, so we know that she baked two dozen. So two dozen, first of all, we need to say that we need to do a conversion here. We know that one dozen equals 12 cookies. So she baked two dozen. She baked how many cookies in all? Hopefully you said 24. So we had a total of 24 cookies. We know that our fraction, they gave it to us in word form. So our fraction was two thirds. So two parts, we're trying to identify two parts out of the three. So we know that we have thirds here. And like I said, we're trying to identify how many cookies, the oatmeal cookies are these first two thirds. So we're going to say one, two, three. 3 units equals 24, and 1 unit equals 24 divided by 3. And we know that that's going to be equal to 24 thirds. And if we do our division or skip count by 3s, we will say that's going to be 8. So we know that each unit is equal to 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So 2 units, we're trying to identify 1, 2 units. So now we will say 2 units equals 8 times 2. 2 times 8, or however you want to write it. So we know that that's going to be 16. We know that 16 cookies were oatmeal. Almost said chocolate chip. Ms. Johnson would have been mad. Alright, so we have our number here, and our answer is 16 cookies out of the 24 were oatmeal. That's how many she baked. Taking a look at lesson number 8 here, it says, relate a fraction of a set to the repeated addition interpretation of fraction multiplication. And we're going to solve the same problem twice. If you look at A, it goes here and here. And the same thing with B. It's the same exact problem. And what we're going to be doing is doing it two different ways. So it says solve each problem in two different ways as modeled in the example. The example gives us 2 thirds times 6. They do the multiplication up top. And then they have the everything over 3. Multiply across over 3, and then they do their division. Here, they do the renaming of 3 as divisible by 3 one time, and 6 divisible by 3 two times. All right, so let's take a look at 
a. We know that a is 2 thirds times 15. We can rewrite that as 2 times 15 over 3. And when we multiply, we have 2 times 15 is 30 over 3. 30 divided by 3 is going to give us 10. Now let's take a look at this one here. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it in a way where we're renaming those numbers. So we have 2 times 15 over 3. Well, we know that 3 is divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 15 is divisible by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So now I have 5 times 2, which gives us 10 over 1, which is the same thing as 10. I could write 10 over 1. I could write that, but we know that anything divided by 1 is itself, so 10 holes is equal to 10. Now we have an improper fraction times our whole number. 5 times 12 divided by 4. Well, 5 times 12 is 60 divided by 4. We just write it out. We know that that's going to go in one time. Multiply, subtract, and then we would say that that's going to be 15. Do our subtraction. So we know that it will be 15 is our final answer. Final answers. So same thing here. Now we would say, well, 5 times 12 over 4. 4 is divisible by 4 one time. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And what numerators are divisible by 4? We know it's 12. 12 is divisible by 4 3 times. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So now we have 5 times 3 to give us our 15. It will be 15 over 1, which is equal to 15. Now remember, if I'm moving too fast, you can always stop or pause the video and rewind the video or ask me any questions that you have in the comment or in class today, and we'll make sure that you fully understand this. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Lesson 9, this is one of my favorite lessons because we came up with the standard algorithm on solving these. It says find a fraction of a measurement and solve word problems. So that's what we're doing. Find a fraction of a measurement and solve word problems. So we came up with the standard algorithm of the three S's, which equals separate, sub, and solve. So first thing we're going to do is each one of these, we have to separate our fraction from our units, right? Fraction from our units, fraction from our units. All right, so let's look at this first one. We have two thirds feet. Well, we know that's equal to two thirds. And every time we separate right between them, we're just going to put the times one. So we know that that's equal to two thirds times one foot. So now we have to say, well, okay, well, we did our separation here. Now we need to substitute or sub in. I know that one foot is equal to how many inches? So I'm just going to rewrite this as two thirds times 12 inches. That's where my substitution comes in. I substitute out my one foot for my 12 inches. So everywhere you see one foot, I'm going to put in my 12 inches. Now I can solve by doing my multiplication, just like last lesson. I say, well, 2 times 12 over 3. You can multiply and say 2 times 12. I'm going to use my renaming where I say, well, 3 is divisible by 3 one time. And 12 is divisible by 3 four times. Now I have 2 times 4. I know that's equal to 8. So this is going to be equal to 8 inches. All right, let's take a look at that again. Separate, sub, and solve. First thing I'm going to do is separate my 2 fifths from my meters. That's going to be equal to 2 fifths times 1 meter. Now that I have one meter, I can say, well, one meter is equal to how many centimeters? This is my substitution. I know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Okay? Now I'm going to solve. Well, I'll say 2 times 100 over 5. I can either cross cancel or cancel, saying 5 is divisible by 5 one time. And 5 is divisible, excuse me, 100 is divisible by 5 20 times. Or I can just multiply across. Let's go ahead and we'll just multiply across for this one. 200 
divided by 5, this is like 200 divided by 5. If I had $200 bills, I couldn't divide it by 5 people without getting changed. I'd go ahead and get 20 tens divided by 5 would be 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Subtract. I know that my answer is 40. All right. Let's take a look at the last problem here. Now we have 5 6 of a year is equal to, first we're going to separate, separate our 5 6 times 1 year. Now that we have that one year, we can make our substitution and say, well, one year is equal to how many months? Five, six times, instead of one year, we're going to sub in 12 months. And I'm going to say here that I'm going to say five times 12 over six. I know that six is divisible by six one time. 12 is divisible by six two times. So I know that it's going to be 10 months. And I remember I could have, let's go ahead and change it up. I could have worked out my multiplication and said 5 times 12 over 6 is equal to 60 over 6. 60 divided by 6 is 10. So I still would have gotten the same answer here if I did the multiplication all the way out. Same thing here. If I, instead of going the, the long route for the previous problem, if I would have said 5 is divisible by 5 one time and 100 is divisible by 5 20 times, I would have had 20 times 2, which is equal to 40, which is my same answer. So you can do the problems either way. It's all a personal preference. If you'd like to multiply and divide, then you might want to do it without doing the canceling or renaming. All right. So hopefully this helped. Boys and girls, this is a 20-minute video, rather long, but it did cover lessons 6, 7, 8, and 9. It's about 5 minutes of lesson, so not too bad. So go ahead and uh, give it a like if it was helpful to you. Also, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And please tell your classmates that uh, you're benefiting from this if you are, of course. And I will see you on the next one.